going. Okay. Hi. <laughs> we missed y'all. We're happy you're here. We are. It's gay month, of it course. Is this is month. kind of our new month that we've never experienced before. So our this new is month. Our new month. Well, I mean, I mean th- this is our first Pride Month. Well, my first Pride Month, like, being out as a lesbian. Technically, like, um, I was out as, like, bi and stuff before, but that wasn't... I mean, this is this is your first time, like, clearly yeah. knowing where you sit yeah. on that scale. I mean, I'm still in the confusion phase, but yeah. you're, like, out proud yeah. lesbian. You know where you sit, and you're happy where yeah. you are. <laughs> so this is your first, I would almost say, official yeah. Pride Month. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So... Um, how can we possibly, 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 oh no, it's coming to you, it's coming to me, how can we possibly have a gay pride month where we don't talk about RuPaul's Drag Race? That's true, RuPaul's Drag Race. I, I, I think that this is such an iconic show, mm-hmm. it absolutely catapulted gay people into the spotlight, and specifically, I mean, drag queens, obviously, yeah. but I feel like a lot of that sort of stuff that has become very common within gay culture really started to hit the mainstream because of RuPaul's yeah. Drag Race, bringing it to that sort of, I hate to say it, but almost that preteen yeah. audience, and they really oh, spread it. Oh, they, yeah. I mean, working in a dance studio, I don't know anybody that knew more about RuPaul's Drag Race rather than, like, that sort of, like, 12 yeah. to probably 15 yeah teenage girl demographic yeah. like they knew everything it was amazing it was like whoa I know right and like I feel I feel that um RuPaul's Drag Race has done a really good job at like humanizing gay men specifically yeah yeah, yeah. because you get to see the full the full story especially in the earlier seasons I'm thinking about Roxy Andrews crying on the stage and saying that she got left at a bus stop when she was a kid I, you know and you know like, over time, I feel like it's leaned more into the drama just with all the untucked mm-hmm. stuff. But I very much feel like in the early seasons especially, you had a lot more of that raw essence. Like, hearing what some of the drag queens had to go yeah. through because you realize, like, obviously they grew up, like, a generation before. A yeah. lot of the queens on the show now, I feel like, are part of that similar generation yeah. to you and I. Like, yeah. they're more... Young. They're yeah, young. They, they're more part of that demographic. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the queens that were going on the show at the time, a lot of them were a older. little bit older, a little bit more seasoned. Yeah. So you had a lot of them saying what it was like to grow yeah. up in that day and age where being gay was not yeah. as acceptable as it was now. So I, I like both. They have a very different feel. Like the mm-hmm. feel between early seasons and later seasons, completely mm-hmm. different show in I, my opinion. I feel like now they lean into like the glitz and glamour of it. Whereas drag queens back then and probably drag queens now I don't know I've never looked at the income of a drag queen where you you struggled to do what you love and you know I very much feel like just nowadays in particular it's kind of gone from where drag queens before had to be able to lip sing they had to be entertaining because ultimately yeah. at their heart that's what drag queens were mm-hmm. yes they were cross dressers but they were for entertainment purposes yeah. I feel like now with you know, all of the new social media and everything, a drag queen can simply be good at makeup. And they really Go don't need face. a lot more than that. Yeah. Like, people will follow them. People will, you know go crazy over them and all the rest whereas drag queens back in the day had to work for every single penny they had in some ways i think it's way easier for more modern drag queens they they aren't expected to do as much whereas older drag queens were expected to do more back then but have also been expected to keep up with changing talents yeah they need to be just as good as at makeup as some of these younger queens but they also have that entire history of their performing background do you know what I mean yeah I understand that um I think that comes with the like social media age we've kind of entered yep absolutely and like I feel like back then the queens were a lot nicer to each other I would say they were a little more supportive there was less cattiness to some extent because I think they all knew they were all going through something very similar they were all struggling and they were all there because they loved the art of drag. I love that clip where I think it's Bianca Del Rio says, we're drag queens in a fucking competition. The only thing worse is fucking prison. I mean, it's true. <laughs> it's, it's very true. Also, Bianca Del Rio, uh, my favorite queen. Yeah. She is my soul animal. I love Bianca my so much. My favorite queen, Violet Chachki. Mm. Love Violet I see that. So I see much. that. Aesthetics so good. You have always loved always Violet. Always love Violet so much. Oh, I love it. Um... But yeah. RuPaul's Drag Race, what was your first exposure to RuPaul's? 
Hmm. My first exposure, I think I started watching season six. Mm. Season six, and that's the one with Bianca and Adore and all that, probably, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because season five before was Jinx. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I saw clips of the tail end of probably the lip syncs, honestly. Right. Seeing, like, the lip sync compilations and stuff from the early seasons and mm-hmm. being kind of obsessed with it because I was, like, because I'm performing her. So, yeah. like, seeing that and being like, that's, whoa. Like, I love that. I love the passion they throw into that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good, especially in the heels and, like, oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, yeah. And just the... The prowess, like, I remember my mind being blown at um, the Jinx versus Detox lip sync. Yes. Uh, yeah, Mambo number one or something like that. Yeah, yeah. honestly, what so still good. to this day, one of my favorite lip yeah. syncs. I still love it. Yeah, it's so good. It's just, it's nice to see all of that passion just be shot out of people. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think that was really my first exposure to it. I watched throughout of season six. Mm, I think I watched season seven, but I don't remember a lot of it. And I think I pittered out around season eight. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, sometimes I would keep up with all the other stuff. I, I hear a lot about the drama that goes on. Yep. I don't know a lot about it, but I hear a lot about it. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the negatives that came with all the blow in popularity is the um, intense fan base. Because they are yeah. very stanny and yeah. not kind to and I mean, each other. You, you and I have kind of talked about um, stands mm-hmm. and stuff like that mm-hmm. and how you and I both are – fans are one thing. Stands are much more toxic yeah. and I think dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't think it's a good thing to be a stan in some ways just yeah. because you need to acknowledge that people are people because they have faults. Yeah. And a stan is one of those people who they think that their idol can do no wrong and that is extremely toxic and yeah. dangerous. yeah. Not only does that put extreme pressure on the idol, realizing like, oh my God, what if they ever see me as less than perfect? Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. But that's also very negative because that leads to a lot more like attacking behavior for other artists and yeah. stuff. And that's where you hear those horror stories about one queen's fans going to yeah. another queen and like ripping them apart. Yeah, and and that scares right. me. Yeah. Like that's never what this was supposed yeah. to be. And it really does bother me yeah. that we see so much of it now. Yeah, I think that... As they move forward, there's, like, the general public kind of perceived um, a lot of the queens as, like, these TV characters. And not, not real, real people. people. Yeah. Yep. Because I feel like, I don't know because I haven't seen any of the um, the later seasons, but I'm assuming that um, there is a lot less humanization of the queens. Like, um, yeah. in the past, they... They would, like, um, prioritize those stories. They would have, like, the voice calls or the video calls with their moms or their yep. significant others and just, like, f- like you would be able to see that emotion come out of them. The humanity. Yeah. Literally. I feel, and you can see the queens come together. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, they're they're like a little family even though they're competing with each other. Yep. Because they can all reminisce about something similar that happened to them, whether yeah. it was the feelings of abandonment, yeah. the feelings of being, you know, beaten or brutalized yeah. because they were gay, yeah. or the story of everyone making fun of them, falling into drugs and alcohol yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, there was that real humanity to them. But now I just feel like, um, it's not that he- the humanity isn't there, I just feel like it's not shown as much. Not nearly. No. It, this is all about views now. It's all yeah. about ratings and yeah, views. It, it's, yeah. It's become more manufactured, if yeah. you know what I mean. I feel Less yeah. genuine. Uh, that makes me kind of sad, though, because now I feel like it's kind of a cash, cash cow. It is, cash absolutely. Cow. And I know, for me, I started watching RuPaul's Drag Race. You were the first one that brought mm-hmm. it to me because you introduced me to drag music. And from drag mm-hmm. music, I started getting into the show. Mm-hmm. I started getting into it during season seven, yeah. but then ended up going back and watching yeah. a lot of the previous so episodes. Good. And yeah. I'm not going to say that either you or I are super fans, no. not even close. Not really. I wouldn't even say that we reached the level of fan necessarily. No. Because for you and I, we watched a couple of seasons and know a lot about them. Like I would say I know a majority of the older winners yeah. and everything like that. Um, I mean, I feel my own way about yeah. some of them, such as Tara Sanchez, yeah. but that's not what we're here to talk about today. But I know I got into season seven, went back, watched season six, went back, watched season five, season four, and season three. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving forward, I did watch season eight, but really fell out in season nine yeah. where I just, it, after watching all of the older seasons, especially yeah. because I went from seven to six, five, four, three, 
and then bounce forward to eight and then trying to get into nine, mm-hmm. it was really hard because you saw just how much the show had changed in yeah. that time. It had become a lot more like, oh, product placements and advertisements and push the queens, push the yeah. queens, push the queens and, you know, runway look, runway yeah. look. And it became a lot less like even the challenges in and of themselves. It's like, oh, look, another runway challenge. Yeah. Oh, look, another thing that has nothing to do with being a drag queen yeah. and just being, you know, Pretty. a supermodel. Yeah. Yeah. And, again, that's kind of what happens because eventually you have to realize, like, you're going to go through the stock of all of the best drag queens yeah. possible. And I hate to say that, but that's kind of what it is. And now we have so many more young queens. And I'm not saying that they're not good, so don't take that the wrong mm-hmm. way. But they just don't have the time and the experience that some of the other queens were yeah. able to bring because they're simply not as old. They haven't had the time to age like fine wine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're more like grape juice at this point. They just yeah. need their time. Yeah, they do. But um, we're going to take a quick break here and then talk a little bit more when we come back. Yes. Hello and welcome back to Gay by Gay. Woo! (laughs) We're getting so good at that. I was going to say, I think we found our jingle, my dude. Yeah. I that think that's so it. I love it. We've been testing out several yeah. over the last uh, several weeks and everything. I think that's the one that's sticking so if, far. If you've been here, thanks for sticking around for the jingle evolution. Unless you clicked out every time you heard a new yeah. jingle and just went, screw this. Just skip 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> skip the intro. Actually, skip for the first five minutes. Yeah. They're going to talk about There's nonsense anyway. Yeah. They're going to be distracted anyhow. Yeah. Um, True. RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. That's what we're actually talking about before we get distracted yes. okay. again. We're going we're gonna to go over some of our fa- favorite queens for you guys. You so, good, my dude? Only a little bit. Mm. Only a little bit good. But I, w- I will say, I think number one favorite queen, still Violet Chachki. And why do I love Violet Chachki so much? Because I know, like, in her season, she got, like, a little bit of a bad rap for being a bitch for a little while. I think she's just got resting I bitch think face. So. I, I think, think she was so. a genuine person, and everyone was just like, oh, she looks bitchy. And she's just like, sorry, this is my face. Yeah. I'm just snatched. <laughs> like, yeah. that's it. <laughs> One, I love her aesthetic. I love, I love yes. like, the Dita Vonti style. I like, love the burlesque uh, feel to everything the she old does. Style. If you've ever seen, like, on her Instagram when she was doing all of her live yeah. shows, I wanted to go to one of them so badly because yeah. I loved what she had going yeah. on. I was like, yes, yes. I think her music is very good. I think I I've listened to quite a few of her songs. Yeah. The, what is it called? Um. There's this one song by her. It's a lot more me. And the music video that went with it, oh, the production yes. value was awesome. Loved it. Off the chain. A little less you and a lot more me. So good. I love it. She makes me want to throw money at her. She <laughs> she has that effect on yeah. people. Not just because she's gorgeous, but she ha- she has that like performance essence yeah. that you just can't help but be like, I want to pay I'm you. I'm so infatuated. I yeah. want to give you money. But um, I wish I had that performance <laughs> essence. I wish people just wanted <laughs> to give me money. Yeah, like she... Uh, that the, Violet just embodies like the feminine essence that I like. Yes, I think so. I mean, other than the fact that I think she's also missing like six ribs, True. but oh my gosh! And like, uh, can we just talk about that the, snatched waist for a second mm-hmm. there? How? How? Can we talk about Love. the aerial work? Love that. You guys oh know, for God. me as a dance instructor yeah. and a forever lover of acrobatic arts, I know. you guys know that I love me some aerial work. And it's watching amazing. her on the Lyra hoop, yeah. oh, amazing. my everything. Talk about taking, like, being a queen to the next level. Literally, like, just like, oh, hey, you know, lip syncing? What if I lip sync in the air yeah. on a hoop? True. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so Please. Good. Please do. Um, Honestly, when, when everything kind of goes back to normal after C19 and yeah. everything... I would really still love to go to one of her shows. You and I need to go. We, go. we should. We need, oh, it's we need so to go. Good. Okay, Abby, who's yours? You gotta said- be gotta be Bianca Del Rio. Yeah. Honestly. Why? Um originally, believe it or not, when I first watched the season, I did not like her at all. Mm-hmm. And I was like, she seems like such kind of a bitch, yeah. really. But then once you realize that underneath all of that, like she comes off very caustic. Mm-hmm. But she's actually a very, like, maternal Motherly. type. She is very, like, it's maternal type. Yeah. Oh, my god. And honestly, the more you listen to her reason, the more you realize, like, she's not saying it to be mean. Mm-hmm. She really just does have that very yeah. cutting sense of humor. Yeah. The more you start to kind of fall in love with her. And it's yeah. like, you know what? She's not saying this to hurt. Like, there's no actual fire yeah. behind her words. It's kind of funny. It's so good. It's kind of funny. I don't I know that I it. want her to read me because yeah. I feel like I would go home okay. crying. But at the same time, I'd be crying while yelling, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> You're hilarious. I love the relationship that Bianca and Adore have. 
It's so, so cute. It's, it's so, so adorable. <laughs> so pure. And I, I love, love, love the fact that um, Bianca Del Rio was a seamstress beforehand. She she already amazing. had the reputation before yeah. she ever walked onto the stage. And again, that's kind of what I was saying before, yeah. where some of these older queens yeah. had that. And, you know, even going back farther, we're talking Raven, we're talking yeah. Raja, we're yeah. talking Jinx Monsoon. I mean, can we talk about Jinx Monsoon for a second? Hello, classically trained yeah. in Broadway arts? Definitely. Y'all know I'm about that. Yeah, I love sure. that. Yeah. I mean, Raja, who was already trying to become, like, up-and-coming fashion Mm -hmm. icon and everything, I still look at some of her looks, and I'm like, holy crap. I look at Raven and how much she has changed in the makeup ability to the point that she does RuPaul's makeup, like, for God's sakes. Like, she got damn good. I I love seeing queens kind of, like, find their niche. Yes. And, like, sitting in it and changing the game. And, I mean, can we be real for a second? I don't Mm -hmm. think it's possible to talk about RuPaul's Drag Race and talk about Queens without talking about the ultimate power couple, uh, (laughs) Trixie and Katya. Yeah, Double Bryans. Double Bryans. I mean, (laughs) B-squared. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love them. They are... They're web series. All of them. So good. So So good. So comedic. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, I have to say, like, it it has been very clear. If you've ever watched WOW or World of Wonder on YouTube, that's where they post all of the drag queens, kind of, like, separate spinoff shows and Mm -hmm. stuff. There have been a lot of different queens that have tried out a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. The two, in my opinion, that have had the most staying power were, um, Boot... What was... uh, uh, Tudor Boot? Yeah, I remember that one with the with the fashion photo yeah. review. Yeah, yep. that was really with Raja good. and Raven. I love that one. Classic, yeah, love so it. Good. And uh, yeah. by Trixie and Katya. Yeah. I, I they brought on a lot of other queens, but I just feel like a yeah. lot of them did not have that same staying power. I will say one of my favorites was that show with Alyssa Edwards. Mm. Like, um, what was it? Oh. Didn't they do like a knockoff Dance Moms thing with Alyssa yeah, Edwards? Yeah, but and they did. Um, they did one on World of Wonder where yeah, they yeah, were yeah, doing yeah. her makeup. I forgot. I'm forgetting I, what it's. I called. know what you mean. Um, Alyssa's Secret. Yeah, Alyssa's Secret. Oh, so that was good. a good one. That was I a good love one too. The face. I love how. And honestly, I have to say, I do love Alyssa. And you yeah, know what? The dancing. You know who, You know, I actually have to talk about that for a minute because Laganja, I think, was. Obviously, one of the younger queens yeah. at the time to go on the show. I think a lot of people found her really annoying and mm-hmm. very kind of like, poor me, victim yeah. mentality. Bitch, she done, she's grown. Oh, so much. She yeah. has done, she yeah. has done the thing. So much. So good. She has gotten, not only is she still an amazing dancer, mm-hmm. but have you guys seen some of the looks and everything she's yeah. been turning recently? So good. And on top of talking about turning looks, can we talk about Miss Fame? Yeah, she was. Fame. She was always one of my favorites, and I know that she was all the brand, the brand, yeah. the brand, and everyone's like, you don't have a brand. Bitch, she made brand. her brand now. I think she's Miss traveling all over the world being like a gorgeous model, and I'm like, I think, damn. I think the last time I saw Miss Fame, like, I just like looked her up to see what she was doing, was like probably a week ago, and she had like just gotten a spread in vogue yeah like italian vogue and like that's what i mean like everyone was, everyone was making fun of her because yeah. they're like uh-huh, she thinks she has a brand yeah. and i'm like bitch now she does i love miss fame and the chickens yeah my favorite. i think that will always be an iconic <laughs> i speak to chickens and just hearing that i was like oh that sounds like a leah yeah i love you wish it. you could speak to chickens oh, i wish i love chickens and i also love the um, Trixie's kind of like cowgirl style. The, like I, glitzy cowgirl, you know, kind of Pamela Anderson. Yeah, like yeah. You know when I first saw Trixie? Dolly I, Parton. Yeah, mm. Dolly Parton is like oh, an icon. But like when I first saw Trixie, I don't think I was all for the aesthetic yet. She has grown into I it. Know. She really has. I know, and it's become like a full brand Barbie doll. Like, Absolutely. Full on, and I was like really respect, really respect that. And the Absolutely. makeup line and everything, I hear it's great quality. And, um, yeah, it's just really nice to see the queens, like, branch out and grow and And that's what that I mean. Stuff. Like, so many of the queens have, and they have found success beyond the show, which yeah. is so cool to kind of watch them grow from that first, like, kind of coming out phase yeah. into, like, they all have their own niches, you said. Yeah. Like, it's absolutely amazing to watch. Yeah. I feel like the majority of the queens don't use their fame for wrong things. No, they don't. I think that a lot of them come happy. from a very good place. Yeah. Um, none of them seem to, you know, take advantage yeah. of, like, their fans or yeah. anything like that. I think, yeah. I, I feel like as the queen, like, as we've moved up, I feel like the last 
two really iconic yeah. queens would be Bob the Drag Queen, just because yeah. she was a bit of an icon yeah. in and of herself. So good. And Sasha Velour, just because yeah. Sa- oh. Sasha has something very different that I would still say I have not so seen different. replicated in any, any other. She very was like an intellectual, yeah. artistic yeah. queen. And that really spoke to me yeah. on my level. I know that there are some people that are, don't like her yeah. aesthetic. I always loved it because mm-hmm. I was like, it's so refreshing and different than anybody before that, her or since. That final lip sync where she lifts her wig up. The, the fucking rose reveal with the rose oh petals. My god. Oh my Phenomenal. god. Absolutely but, iconic. Um, yeah. I had something I was going to say, but my brain said, woo. I mean, I hate to say it, but after Sasha, do I know even any of the winners? No, not, not really. really. Um, Aquaria I, won. I know that Aquaria yeah. won, but again, I feel like she's much more... I don't want to insult her, yeah. so please don't take this the wrong way. I think all of these queens are amazing, but she seems more like an Instagram queen can, to me. Can we tell a story that is really kind of funny? Do it. So, um... We don't we don't keep track with RuPaul's Drag Race now. Not RuPaul's Drag Race Canada. Not Down Under. None of that. Mm. And uh, we met the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Canada, Suki, Suki Priyanka, like years ago. Believe it or not, I still had braces. Yeah. Oh my. We goodness. have photos with her. Yeah. Um, what happened was, as you guys know, I run a dance company mm-hmm. and Aaliyah is one of the dancers in the company. Mm-hmm. We had been competing and believe it or not, she, Suki, yeah. or Priyanka is her name now. Yeah. Um, she was the MC at one of our competitions. We have photos with her before she won yeah. RuPaul's Drag Race Canada. Full boy mode. I didn't even know oh, that yeah. Suki Oh yeah, suit and everything. Yeah, yeah, we had no idea. No idea at all. But we can actually say that we have met her and... Honestly, really she nice. was she is still to this day one of my favorite yeah. MCs that we've ever had. Oh, she yeah. was charismatic, yeah. entertaining, so funny, like yeah. really really Not amazing. Boring. Keeps you awake. Oh yeah, she was oh, great. Yeah. But yeah, that's really funny to me when I found that out. I was like, that's cool. Yeah, that <laughs> was amazing. So cool. Yeah. Um kind of in review though, I feel like RuPaul's Drag Race I feel like the earlier seasons to me are forever going to be iconic. Yeah. I kind of feel like they are continuing to branch out. And while part of me says good for them, I'm glad that it's moving to other countries because there are drag queens all over the world that would love the opportunity. To me, and in my opinion, it has just become a little bit too commercialized for me. Not that I don't think all of these people are talented, but I think I've tapped out at this point. It's like, it's now like a big brother instead of like a RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. To me, that's what I think. It's just... A I think, lot now, and that's good because I feel like those people do deserve the recognition. They but, do. But it's just, it's not the same, and no. I wouldn't expect it it's, to be It's the lost same. a lot of the heart, yeah. and it's kind of changed over to that major. There, there's more of a formula now. It's that major reality competition. Yeah. And it's, it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's just not for me it's anymore. Thing. It's how TV turns things. But let us know what yeah. you think. Are you continuing to stay up to date? How long have you been watching? Have you been a fan yes. since season one? <laughs> oh, that was a while ago. That uh, was a while ago. But let us know. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to share the podcast. Yeah. We would so, so, so appreciate it. Again, we have over 2,000 views now, which is absolutely so amazing. So exciting. Um, I actually think that the day that we're recording this, mm-hmm. I think we're just under 2.3 thousand. <gasps> So thank you so much to everyone who has been supporting us. It would mean the world to us. Number one, favoriting the podcast. We love getting that in our inbox. It means the world to us. And also, if you can share this and spread it with other people, it would absolutely mean so much to us. We would love to get more viewers and everything else. We're slowly starting to branch out and brand out, and we're really happy to bring you guys along on the journey. So thank you so much, and we will talk at you in the next episode. Yes, take it. Bye, guys. Bye.